All right. I think we are live again. So you want to kick us off, Homer? I don't know, but uh, I know that I'm Scott from Mercicob.com. Yes, I'm Seth from SethMarkwood.com. Together, along with you, the three of us, maybe even more, <laughs> for Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Thank you for joining us in attempt number two. Uh, this is what I feared would happen. We have a lot of cards stacked against us. I am uh, far, far away from decent Wi-Fi, and so I am connected with my iPhone through my iPad, which is my hotspot, and uh, just a few bars, and out in the middle of the country, and boy, where are you? Uh, I'm in my home, uh, but we're getting great feedback. Uh, much better, much better sound. Uh, lots of people saying, so far, so good, so this may may be the, the software to uh, to use. We're also having pop-up overlays because we're fancy. So what are we using? What? We're using Ecamm Live. What, what is the software? And it's called Ecamm Live. It's got a big big old watermark in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, <laughs> but uh, but this is, uh, wasn't expecting this one. Yeah, welcome. Uh, we're going to do a Mark Women's Breakfast Club uh, dinner, dinner club. Um, so before I was trying to use OBS, which is a gaming streaming software, but we're uh, looping Skype into that as well. And so we've got whole lots of pieces of technology kind of working against us maybe. Um, and so, uh, but this seems to be working great. So, so because I'm doing this streaming thing through my iPad, <clears throat> normally I would pull up YouTube on my iPad. I could check out the chat. I can't. If oh, I yeah. do that, then I'll, I'll get even worse pixelated than I am. So you'll have to uh, feed any, any chat information my way. Well, I am uh, I'm moderating the chat. So um, everyone is just saying that uh, we've got better better feedback coming in. We've got 16 people Great. doing right, down, right now. So um, Good deal. James says better happy feedback as opposed to the looping feedback that we had. That's right. That's right. Uh, happy to, sit, to share an evening with you guys. Uh, we're happy to, happy to share it with you too. So yeah, so we, um, I think in my uh, last week's video, I, I shot a short, um, I don't know, intro to it. Uh, just kind of laid out the fact that man, the world has changed uh, quickly. <laughs> and so it was two and a half, three weeks ago that we filmed a batch of, what was it? Three videos. Yep. And um, you know, at that time that we were filming, uh, like many people, we said, you know, this thing, this, it's going to, this, uh, COVID-19, it's going to pass pretty quickly. It's not a big deal. And, um, you know, it's not really going to affect us all that much. And man, what a, what a difference this a couple of weeks can make. All right. So how has it affected you in your life? Uh, well, you know, um, first of all, uh, my, my business has, um, had as many people working from home as can work from home. Uh, you know, thankfully I'm in the, the marketing and sales realm and I'm already doing a lot of video, a lot of phone calls, emailing. And so it's pretty easy and seamless transition for me to work from a home office. Um, but it has put us into a, a position of trying to scramble to figure out how do you, um, how do you, are there opportunities to make revenue during this down time? Um, or uh, what are what are the opportunities to add value to existing or potential future customers? Um, and then what are the things we can do for long term sustainability of the business? A lot of the questions that I'm sure uh, lots of businesses are asking right now. And on top of that, our company's never done remote work. Um, and uh. so, you know, the first week was just figuring out how do we make this possible? Um, the second, uh, second thing is what can our manufacturing side of our business, um, accomplish during this downturn, especially if, um, there's a broader shutdown, you know, a state start to, to shut down. Um, is that going to happen where we are? Uh, we're, we're bracing for that potential. Mm. Everybody smash that like button. Yeah. So everybody's in the same boat. Well, uh, I, I, though I keep part of my life secret, it's not a secret. I am a corporate trainer at a, a, a furniture and cabinet hardware distributor. And uh, it turns out 
many of the goods that we sell are being used by some of those essential manufacturers. And so we are categorized as a, a supplier to essential manufacturing. So we're open. We sell um, protective, personal protective equipment, PPEs. And, um, but, but more than that, the hardware that we manufacture and distribute is being used in the production of uh, cabinetry and medical devices and things like that. So um, in our office here in North Carolina, usually there's a couple hundred people in our offices and now maybe, maybe a quarter of them are in the office. Um, the rest who can work from home and who choose to work from home are working from home. Um, I have four grandkids that live in the same home with us. And so if I'm home, I, it's hard, hard for me to be productive from home. So I go into work each day and uh, I, I'm a, a trainer, but I'm associated or assigned to the HR department. Hmm. And so the HR department has half the team working from home, half in the office, and they alternate off and on each day. Uh, every other day, I should say. Um, but I'm the only constant. I'm there every day and uh, getting stuff done. So what am I doing? Uh, I'm conducting webinars for our sales reps, uh, many of which are in states where they're not allowed to travel. Um, and yet they still have to be conducting business because, as I mentioned, we're providing products to manufacturers that are still open. Yeah. And uh, so uh, some of what we've been doing as far as webinars are – getting everybody to up their game on how they communicate at a distance. You know, how do you stay connected while being distant? And I have been harping for years that the, the iPhone that the company put in their pocket is a super powerful tool that they can stay in touch with their customers and communicate with their customers in whatever way they choose. If they want a, a text message, if they want to do Skype, if they want to, you know, email, shoot a video, any of those things, it's right in their pocket. Yeah. And uh, suddenly, suddenly the light bulb has gone off and uh, folks want to know, how do I do all these things? Hmm. So that's a, a big part of what I've been doing for the last couple of days. And uh, I, I also have access to a couple of our buildings. We're supposed to stay in our own areas, but because I have a training center in another building in the shop uh, that I access to build, samples and mock-ups and cabinets and things like that is in a building other than our admin building. Uh, so I'm, I'm able to move as needed between those places. And so I uh, get, to, get to stay in communication with a few more people, I think, than most in our company. And so mm. I, I'm also kind of the uh, unofficial cheerleader <laughs> in the company, keep people's spirits high. And, yeah. Uh, I think for the most part, you know, everybody's uh, there. There's a level of nervousness, but you know, there's opportunities in this, and mm -hmm. uh, we got to do what we can to help our customers in any way that we can. And I think that's interesting. It's a, it's something new. Yeah, we were talking about today that there's there's this this tension. I, I think on the tightrope uh, that we normally feel in, in, in our industry of trying to truly add value to the customer experience and making a sale, right? I mean, that, that I feel is a constant tightrope uh, because we, we really want both of those. Um, is It feels now more than ever that uh, if you lean onto the sales side of that rope, it, it, it can come across as very opportunistic. Um, yeah. And so, you know, the discussion internally we're having is we need to, uh, for a time, and, and, and you know, we sell to restaurants, and restaurants are being incredibly hard hit during this time. Um, we acknowledge that there's nobody, <laughs> there's no market for our product right now. And so in a time where you, you find yourself with nobody buying, nobody interested in buying your product for what may be a couple of months, um, how do you continue? And, and you know, it would be... Um, it would be very tempting to lean even heavier into the sales sign. I think that that yeah. just is, is not the time for that. And so the right. tack we're taking is, you know, how can we just just dump as much value as we can onto the situation and, and true, not uh, selfish, but selfless value? Um, because, 
you know, we, we, we believe it's going to come back around um, when things do change. Well, providing education, especially in your area where you're talking about sanitation, right? That's, that's important. You know, what's going to happen at a restaurant that's been shut down for a couple months that then needs to restart? It's almost like they've had to winterize, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so there's going to be, I would think, a need for education about, okay, how do you prep things to, to, to be uh, uh, stagnant? And then what do you do to kickstart everything when it comes back? Yeah, that's one of the things that we recently, uh, just last week, had to communicate is, um, you know, one of our products has a heating element in it. And under normal conditions, it's connected to the sink. It's constantly being fed water. And so it, the, the heating element is always underwater. Well, if a business shuts down for a month and a half um, and they don't turn our product off, that heating element, which heats up every day, may be out of water. And then there's some potential oh. side effect. You know, really the biggest risk is that any grease that's on it will smoke and then the smoke will, you know, cause a smoke alarm to go off or something. So there's oh, not gosh, a, yeah. a, a real danger, but um, yeah. So we, we kind of issued almost a press release, a widespread email to our customers and told them, hey, you need to follow these steps if you are going into a mandatory shutdown. And then a lot of the stuff I'll be creating over the next week or so is kind of that restart up procedure. So. So one of the things that we're doing here is we're practicing a degree of social distancing. Um, Boy and I, we got together and ate some barbecue the other night, but we were all staying six feet apart, uh, which is really, really weird with people you love. Yes. Um, But. We're, we're planning on doing maybe not live, but but doing recordings like this at a distance. And one of the things that this makes possible for us is maybe having a visitor join us for some sessions. So um, I've reached out to a few people that I'd love to have us have a conversation with, and and I don't mean interview somebody. I mean have. Uh, one of the members of Barclay Ben's Breakfast Club be here for our random conversations. Yeah. And uh, so heard from a couple people. And, and uh, in, in fact, anybody sitting here in the audience who might want to participate, you know, I, we're not going to do this forever, but uh, who knows how long this will, will happen. So if you're interested in joining us, let us know and we'll put you on the list. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and if we find out that this system, uh, this eCam uh, works well and, uh, you know, live or otherwise, maybe it is something that we integrate into um, regular shows once normalcy uh, comes back. But we, we thought with everything going on in the world right now, uh, we've got an a, a episode ready, locked in and ready to go and decided, hey, let's let's touch base Um by the way, a very important question is, uh, what are you smoking tonight? And I know your answer is probably Lane 1Q. Actually, Actually it's not. I, I, I was going to say, 19, what is it, 1944? <laughs> no, it's 1944. Um, the other day. Oh, you're talking the, uh, the Eric Stokebees? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm not smoking that today. Um, Oh my gosh, this label is really getting faded here in the sun. It's been out of the, out of the back deck here. Mm. Um, I think this is Lane BCA. It tastes like Lane BCA, but I can't make out the label. So uh, I'm smoking Lane BCA. <laughs> so, so, so 1Q, got it. <laughs> no, it's not 1Q. And I'm smoking in a, a Devil Ants acorn. Nice. It's funny because I've had a few people who've noticed on Instagram that I'm smoking from these a lot. I'm smoking from this and the, uh, and the Devil Ants Cuddy. And I used to smoke almost exclusively Country Gentleman and uh, the Diplomat Apple. Those are really my favorite go-to shapes. But what happened is two years ago, I moved from the house that Seth is in to a house that's actually very close to my work. It takes me eight minutes to get to work. Um, and so my smoking opportunity has, has shrunk quite a bit. It used to be about 20 minutes. And um, this is the perfect size for a 15 to 20 minute smoke for me. And in fact, if I want to smoke on the way in, I can usually smoke the same bowl 
coming back unless I'm smoking it at lunch, which I'll often do as well. So it's a, it's a great size, a great shape, and for a, short, a shorter smoke, I've really been enjoying it. Mm. You know, that's, that, that is funny. Uh, one of the things that I have, have uh, I've not missed it, but have noticed just working from home is I'm not listening to podcasts. Uh, not listening to mm. audiobooks because I, I don't have that 30 hour or 30 minute each way commute. Um, and that's one of the things that is lost like, immediately. Yeah. You know, getting an extra, extra half hour of sleep and, and uh, <laughs> able to, you know, wrap up work and immediately and home with, uh, home for dinner. Um, it's really, really nice. You know, so far, a weekend done a good job of keeping a separation of the workspace and the home space, uh, which has helped. Um, by the way, I you am, need that. Yes. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the stuff, uh, I got a comment today. So I'm doing a lot of stuff by video, even more than I normally would. And normally I'm doing a lot. And one of my coworkers, because we're all now trying to uh, keep up on, uh, through video, um, commented that I'm, I'm still wearing uh, company polos. So wearing company shirts, I said, look, uh, literally from 830 this morning until about two o'clock in the afternoon, I was constantly on video calls with people. And, and so, you know, I, I feel like I need to continue to dress up also. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like it's a good mental habit because I still feel like I'm going to work. Um, yeah, I'm just down the hall from my bedroom, but I still I am, I'm, I am going to work and I fear mm -hmm. uh, reaching a mental state of just doing work from the couch. Like, I don't think I would, uh, I don't think I would uh, work well with that mentality. So there's a short and sweet little video. In fact, I'll link to it below when we get done. Um, it's about two minute long here on YouTube. It's a simple little animation. And we shared it out with all of our employees this week with uh, kind of best practices for working at home. And the very first thing is dress for work. Yeah. Um, other tips like you've done creating a space that is your workspace. And, and just like when you're working, um, Schedule yourself for some time off, right? Yeah. So you're going to get up and you're going to have lunch. You're going to get up and have have breaks and, and do some things where you're interacting with the kids a bit. But if you really truly are working from home and being productive, you need to be working from home. Right. One of the things that I honestly would fear for some people, because I've talked to some people who've been treating this like a snow day, yeah. is that you are behaving like a non-essential employee when you're just hanging out at home. And uh, companies, when all this gets straightened out, might just realize they did just fine without you. Yes. And uh, I don't ever want that to be the case. So yeah, yeah I'm, uh, that's why a big, big part of why I'm keeping busy. And I kind of have a list of things I've wanted to do, but have never had time to do. Yep. Perfect time to chip away at those things. Yeah, it's exactly what has happened. It's the things that have been a priority, but haven't been the things uh, on fire um, is what's really getting done. All, all of the stuff that, you know, eight months ago, you said, man, this is, it would be really great if we had this. And for the last eight months, it just hasn't made its way to the top of the list. Those are the things that now there's some, some freedom and some space to tackle. Um, yeah, Pat Flynn did a really great video too on working from home. You know, it's something he has done for 12 years now and, and gave best practices on, on both ends of the spectrum, you know, both, um, on the side of, Hey, get up and treat this like work. And also on the, uh, side of don't, don't allow work to bleed into home time and home life. And it's really easy to blur those lines. And he said, try to keep them distinct because, um, blurring them in either direction is dangerous. Um, you know, and, and so one of the biggest things for me in managing people remotely now is trying to trying to keep a mindset of uh, focusing on, on um, outcomes and not activity, uh, you know, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if they're if they're if things are happening and they're productive, I don't care if they're on the couch. I don't care if they're in their PJs, um, you know, as long as the outcomes are, are what's expected. Um, you know, I don't want to micromanage and I could see it being something that is, I don't do that and try not to do that in the office. Certainly don't want to do that here, but I could see that being very tempting. Well, in our HR department, we we've developed a habit over the last probably year 
where every morning at 8.30, we do a quick check-in. We just go around the room and see what everybody's got going on for the day. It's helpful because it lets us know if somebody's, if somebody's sitting there with their headphones on, we know that they're attending that webinar in the middle of the day. Or if they're gone for half the day, we know why, what's going on. And uh, we've continued that. We just, we just do it through uh, you know, video conferencing now in the morning. And that's been really great. Hmm. And then every day in the afternoon, we, uh, we all send, this has just started, a quick update to our manager, letting them know what we've been up to for the day and uh, what we've accomplished. And that's good. It, it holds you accountable because you know that somewhere around 5 o'clock, you've got to write something Okay. And reporting in, and is it, is it look anything like what you said you were going to get done at the beginning of the day? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. That's uh, uh, often a task or a challenge with in office work, anyway. Um, yeah. By the way, I never got around to it. I am vaping a Caliburn. Um, I love this little, it's a pod, um, uh, refillable pod system, uh, e cig, and. Um, Rechargeable, it's just, it's really, really great. Really great flavor on this. Uh, this is the original pot I bought almost a year ago. Um, you know, I vape very infrequently, but, um, and this is a, I think it is a, I think it's a caramel, it's like caramel marshmallow butter pecan ice cream. <laughs> it's, it's wild. It's, it's a, a nice dessert uh, vape. It's great. Got a big bottle of it, and I uh, need to get some more pods and, and some more for when it, you can't buy it um, coming soon. But uh, yeah, it, it's excellent. So you know, I'm inside my yeah. house. Don't don't smoke in the house. So I know that your landlords appreciate that. Yeah, they used to, but So uh, what has Amazon delivered this last week? Anything interesting? Uh, nothing. Nothing to my house, anyway. Uh, last week uh, really? delivered, yeah, last week delivered a uh, meat grinder attachment for a um, stand, uh, stand mixer. Hmm. So haven't had a chance, haven't had fresh meat to put in it. Yeah. Sadly. But you better Did believe. Did you stock up on anything? Did you go to the grocery store and stock up on stuff? Yeah, a couple of times. I mean, I, we've got um, all sorts of all sorts of frozen foods, um, a lot of uh, eggs and peanut butter and some some stuff. I mean, we, we could probably eat for five weeks. Um, it's just <laughs> it's amazing how quickly you run out of the easy stuff. Um, yeah. And so, you know, for me, uh, someone was surprised. I, I still plan to keep up keto. Uh, as long as as long as I can, and um, you know, don't have any plans of quitting that. And so, you know, I unfortunately was not able to get to Costco and get a lot of fresh uh, frozen meat to have uh, yeah. around the house. So, hey, from Denmark. Oh, hey, Denmark, you're up late or early? What time is it in Denmark? <laughs> early. It's late. It is, it is, or early. Is that what, five hours? Six hours? Uh, five, five or six, yeah. Yeah, it's like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., something like that. Um, so uh, before any of this hit, I bought a big old brisket that I smoked and didn't share with anybody. Normally when we do a big brisket, I invite all of you guys over, but I, I knew I wanted to have something that would be easy for me to portion out for, for meals. And so I've got a bunch of uh, a cryovac and frozen single servings of brisket that I'm able to sous vide back to life. And that's great because when you sous vide them, unlike microwaving or any other way, uh, they retain their moisture, mm -hmm. which has been, has been great. Um, I also had been making the, that, uh, was telling you about that, um, two thirty seven car. It's early oh, and in, in the night, in the night, <laughs> two thirty seven in the night. Okay. That's, it's called, it's called morning. Uh, morning. Yes. Uh, the other thing that I've been making is that low carb French toast casserole, mm -hmm. which is a, a name I'm giving it. How many, how <laughs> many, many loaves, that loaf? how many loaves of, uh, Aldi bread do you still have? Um, probably about four. And that's just like you, I had the same experience. I walked into Aldi 
all the bread was gone yeah. except for the low, low carb bread. Yeah. So it's times like this that I'm thankful that it's not really great. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not going to tempt people to, to buy it, uh, yes. but it, it sure scratches an itch. Uh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely does. Uh, I, I made some I made some smoked meatloaf two nights ago, and uh, leftover smoked meatloaf sandwiches made with that bread. Oh, it was great, absolutely great. So I, I um, used the air fryer again the other night to make dinner and did some. Is our grilled cheese done? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> it, it might be done next week. Uh, I forgot that's in the the video. Uh, yeah, so um, I've I've cooked I've cooked twenty chicken wings in the air fryer in about forty five minutes before. Um, the other night it took four hours, and I don't oh, know. Gosh. I don't know why. I don't know if taking it to the shop broke it. I don't know what what the deal is. Um, it took so long. Uh, eventually the chicken came out. It was. It was fine, but I don't know what the deal was. It had not ever been that that challenging. Um, but I, I did did use it uh, immediately after to make some open face grilled cheese sandwiches. I got some aged white cheddar um, that I'll slice up and put on there, and so it's you know funky funky melted cheese. So good. Yeah, and it worked just fine for I, that I don't, five minutes. I, I don't th- well, you I think you overloaded it for one thing. Yeah, but I've done it before. But take, and it's taking hard. that long, it's it's spending way too much time in that danger zone. Now you're pushing it past the danger zone, but um, oh, man, that's that's I, I could you could you could have cooked it in the broiler or in the um, oven much faster than that. I would have, but I don't have a working broiler. <laughs> so, I landlord, forgot about that. Landlord, just the oven. Yeah. Just bake it. Yeah, uh, we. Um, I also forgot uh, last night. Last night I cooked some sausages in the sous vide. I took half of them out and and ate them, and they were definitely undercooked. I uh, had not left them in there long enough. That they were definitely on the bubble of risky. Um, and so I took the other five and put them back in there, and then forgot about them and went to sleep. <laughs> so they spent about sixteen hours in the sous vide. Um, I had them, took them out this morning, and had them for lunch. Uh, heated them up. I cannot describe the texture. It all of the juice was gone uh, from them, and it was like it was almost like dry potted meat. Yeah, sure, like, it, it was dry. so yeah. disappointing. It was so disappointing. Uh, getting a question: Is Aristocop still shipping in this crisis? This isolation has me itching to order another pipe. Yeah, we are. J- Jandy's shipping. Uh, she's shipping about every other day right now. Uh, that's more because of the fact that she's got uh, a bunch of kids that she's keeping an eye on and, and uh, you know, trying to keep them from going crazy. Mm. But yeah, she's she's shipping quite a bit. That's great. That's great news. Yep. Has um, do you know? Has there been a change in demand with all this? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah. I really don't, uh, and, and I, I can't overstate how little I have to do with the business. I mean, really, as I say, I am the pretty face of Aristocop.com. Jandy does everything, and because of my day job, that's the way it's got to be. You know, and she'll a uh, couple times a day she'll throw me a message and uh, an email, and she'll forward and say, "Hey, let me bring Scott into this conversation." Yeah. If she's asked a question that, that she can't answer, and that usually has to do with the use of a pipe, she answers all the questions about you know pipe sizes and availability and stuff like that. And pretty much right now, I think everything's available. I don't think there's, I don't think there's an outage yet, and uh, she gets regular shipments from Missouri Mearsham, so she stays on top of that. Well, I, I hate. To- I know that. They're not shipping every day because they're shorthanded. Um, so, well, well, I hate hate to break it to you, but you're not even the pretty face. <laughs> so, <laughs> so even even uh, not doing that job well. How about the public face? There we go. There we go. <laughs> That's more accurate. Yeah, I'm also in uh, into product testing. 
Yeah, yes. yes. So the Cobb Foolery Contest is coming up. We, I, talked to, I posted a video today talking about that, and uh, we have the kits. And I, I am just itching to go take some of those uh, kits into the shop and play around a little bit. I, I have an idea for uh, a design or two that I want to make. I just yeah. have to have time to do it. This is where, this is where if I were working from home, I'd probably make a couple of them, which is really not exactly productive for my, <laughs> for my day job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, you probably would have to go into the shop, which is not exactly too close to, to home either. Uh, I'd, I'd make it happen. Um, question, when will the Dagner Poker be available? Uh, it's available. It's available. Heard it here first. It's available. We have them. If our website says it's not available, that, that, that may just be because it has, the inventory hasn't been updated. Mm. Um, you can throw a message to Jandy, uh, corncobpipes at gmail. I'm sorry, corncobpipes at aristocob.com is Jandy's email address. And, and if, if you see anything on our website that uh, is not there, that you can't place it in your cart, um, just toss her an email, and, and many times it's she's got the inventory in. She just hasn't updated the website. We, we try not to make things unavailable because usually we have inventory coming in, but there are some shapes that she manually takes off, off the site and puts back on the site because uh, they, they trickle in. The Cobbett pipes, for example, Missouri Meerschaum has a hard time keeping up with the production of the uh, the stems for those. Mm-hmm. They come in from Italy, and Italy, right? You know what's going on in Italy right now? <laughs> yes. Hey guys. So uh, new people join uh, us. So th- those pipes, you know, can go in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna see if this works. Well, what, what are you, you, what are you, you doing? May not, you may not hear that, but they're hearing applause. That was a mighty fine answer uh, from the, the public face of Aristocop. Um, I'm, I'm over here now <laughs> playing with this software. Uh, it's got sound effects. <laughs> this is the bicycle horn. Ah, okay. I don't hear any of that. No, it's great. Well, you can watch it on the playback. Uh, so I, I did get a good question today that uh, I'll just go ahead and throw out there and, and maybe I'll throw this out as fodder for the chat room. Somebody asked what the difference is between a pipe with a vulcanized bit with a acrylic bit or stem or the standard Missouri Meerschaum bit. And I, I answered it from my personal point of view as a pipe smoker, but I'm curious what you guys think. Personally, I don't typically like an acrylic bit. I find them to be too hard and kind of slippery. Um, so, and I like to clench a pipe and hold, you know, I'm, typically I'm driving, right? And I got this in my mouth or I'm in my shop. And uh, I just, I don't find those terribly comfortable. The um, vulcanized rubber bits, while I like the way they feel, I don't like the way they taste. And especially if they've been around a little while, maybe sitting in my van exposed to some UV rays, they start to oxidize and they get a sulfur taste. Um, because I've been smoking Missouri Meerschaum pipes since the 70s, I've really gotten used to how much pressure I need to apply, and, and so I don't, I don't chew through bits. I just don't. And I know some people have that experience, but I, I don't bite that hard on them, and so I like them. But if a pipe can accept it, I put the, uh, the Danish bit on it. That's my favorite one. It's a little bit wider, a little bit tougher, and uh, I like the shape of that little bead right there. So that's, that's my favorite. But it has to be a pipe that is made to accept a filter. I don't smoke them with filters typically, but the pipe itself has to have that size bore for the tenon to fit in. And then the, the little Devil Ants pipes use the bit that's called the Royal bit, uh, it's very small. This is available in amber, black, and white. And these are the ones I'm smoking a lot these days. Cool. Uh, got, got uh, sorry, the chat has picked up. Hello, everyone uh, joining new. Um, got, um, I put soft bits on everything because I leave teeth marks. 
Okay. Um, we we have sourced. By the way, speaking of soft softy bits or soft bits, soft we bought a bunch of the uh, of the soft bits from a supplier that uh, they're okay, but they're made for standard pipes, and so all but the Danish bit they fit a little loose. So we actually sourced a smaller size soft bit, and and, and then then we haven't done anything with them. I have. Hundreds of them, <laughs> hundreds of them that uh, we were going to make those available on our website. And, you know, that's just something I have to get on. Really? I did get that other filament in, by the way. Hmm. Great. Great. Um, it's, be it's beautiful, but I wish it were green. What color did you get? Blue. Mm. The one they had. You could have ordered, uh, could have waited. It's not like we're um, we're in a huge hurry. I mean, good to get it in. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Homer was uh, over the other day, and we were talking about going ahead and get a jump on 3D printing, designing and 3D printing uh, this year's 3D printed. Um, what do we call them? Uh, Marco Men's Breakfast Club uh, 3D printed ornaments uh, because. Um, uh, it because I ran into such trouble this year getting them all finished, uh, getting them all 3D printed. Um, Scott, what is the oldest Missouri Merchant pipe in your rotation? Oh, in rotation, uh, not terribly old. Um, it's a good question. Probably 20 years old. 20 years in your regular rotation. Yeah, uh, I've got I've got one in the shop that gets smoked to a fair amount. That's about twenty years old. Uh, that's one that I picked up, you know, at a cigar shop or someplace along the way. Uh, I've got two of them that we know are well over a hundred years old, but they're they're not really in rotation. But I've smoked them. Hmm. That's a good question. And, and then of course I've I've been collecting some of those nineteen fifties era pipes, the ones that have the, the brass band on them and are just gorgeous, you know, that include things like the uh, the bulldog, but I've not smoked them. Um, and don't ask me, Seth, about what you're thinking about. <laughs> I didn't didn't say a word. I didn't need to. It's so ingrained. <laughs> it's so ingrained. Well, we've been uh, at this for about 40 minutes. Um, really? Yeah, really. Yeah, this is this is what happens every single week, uh, and, <laughs> and especially so this week because we're only doing the one. Normally, we do this, hit stop, hit record again, uh, which I suppose we could do. Uh, we can go as long as as long as you'd like, and as long as anyone uh, on the live chat would like as well. But I uh, just want to point out that you know normally by this point we'd be hitting stop on the camera. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, do you gents know if the Chicago Pipe Show will be rescheduled for later this year? Um, I'd like to meet you gents finally, and I'm hoping to get it pushed back and not canceled entirely for the year. Uh, so a couple of things, a um, couple of questions to answer. One, I don't know if it's been rescheduled or will be rescheduled Better. right now. I wouldn't trust anything that is rescheduled at the moment because uh, a lot of things that we have, uh, that I've been um scheduled for has been pushed back and pushed back and just who knows who knows what's going to happen um when all all of this is uh you know um said and done uh, and then the other thing is it has been six years seven years you ended up going to one of the, the shows more recently didn't you uh you went to the chicago show a couple years ago didn't you so without you, I was at the Chicago show. I was at a St. Louis show. Um, I'm sorry, no, it was Kansas City. Um, I was at a show in Chicago. Uh, we have been to the Raleigh show, mm -hmm. and we've gone to the Taft show. I've been there in, in Raleigh with and without you. Yeah. Uh, oh, I said Raleigh. I meant, uh, I meant Richmond, the Richmond show. Yes. Yeah. The, the Taft show was just canceled. So okay. that's uh, they, they're not even bothering saying that they'd re reschedule. I mean, a big part of this is the venues are already booked up. 
And so how are you going to be able to move it if there's not going to be space available for you? And uh, I don't see how Chicago can pull it off because they were already having issues with their menu. So, but we'll see. Uh, never say never. Uh, WKR Piper in Cincinnati said Ohio Pipe Show is still up in the air as well. And uh, we got an official, I think an official invitation from Desert Pine Piper uh, that hopefully we can make the West Coast Pipe Show in Vegas in the fall. You know, if uh, that could be fun. If Southwest keeps having $22 tickets cross country, um, <laughs> might be there. <laughs> might make that happen. Can you buy one months out like that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know what? Um, I talked to somebody whose son flew down to Miami from New York l- l- last week. He flew down on Friday. His ticket was $22 uh, from New York to Miami. But uh, hmm. because of all the uncertainty, he hasn't booked a return flight because he, he doesn't know. And I, I encourage yeah. her to have him go ahead and book the return flight. Even if you have to pay the fee, as soon as this turns around, you know those airline flights are going to just go through the roof. Um, because there are a lot of people in that yep. situation that are away from home, that are locked down, and it's just going to be its going to be <laughs> real expensive, I imagine. Yes, it will. I think you're right about that. <clears throat> yeah, uh, an awful lot for me at work has been canceled for the next two months. I mean, I had a, a calendar that was filled with classes and with me traveling and doing events and things like that. And basically that part of my life has just the calendar got wiped clean. And that's why I immediately said, okay, what am I, what am I going to do? Let's, let's do some things to help our sales reps uh, get ready for this. And so we're, we're doing daily webinars, uh, 120 salespeople invited a hundred seats per webinar. And, uh, um, you know, wh- one of the things, pieces of advice I gave them, I said, you know, if you have any chance of having a contact with your customer, a phone call, a Skype, uh, even if they want to see you in person, that takes priority over a webinar. Uh, we'll record all the webinars and make them available for people after the fact. And mm-hmm. so, uh, like I said, we got two of them in the can now that were actually pretty good. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can continue with that. So. Do you know? Let's say someone uh, watching um, is in a similar situation, but does, doesn't know where to start with, uh, you know, mm. really grabbing hold of remote work. What would be your top tip or, or top two tips on where they should start with um, maybe remote communication? Well, I would go to Steve Dotto's uh, YouTube page and watch watch the video he posted today. Hmm. He posted a video today on how to use Zoom to conduct meetings. Um, Zoom is a a website that can be used for free. There's also a paid version. Um, The paid version, the entry-level paid version for conducting meetings is uh, $15 a month. And for that $15, you can hold unlimited length sessions. The free version, it cuts off at like 45 minutes. Um, the free version, you have a limited number of seats. I want to say it's something like 10 seats with the paid version, the lowest level paid version, you got a hundred seats. The, the, and what I really like about zoom is you have the choice as the, uh, the leader of the meeting to, um, to record the session. You can record it to your laptop or to your computer, or you can have it recorded to the cloud or both if you like it. And if you want to have that redundancy, record it to both. I know that my laptop can't support both running the software and recording. It just doesn't have the, the, the guts to pull that off. Mm. So I record it to the cloud. And what's cool about it is within about an hour after you, you end the meeting, they make videos available or, or files available to you. And they download or they record the video that – Everybody in the audience is seeing. So it's, it's your PowerPoint, it's your video in the corner, or whatever it is you're, you're sharing. But then they also give you individual videos for just you on video, just your content, and they give you a, a separate audio file. So you could, if you wanted to, create a podcast from the conversation. 
Uh, you can use those audio files. It's a much cleaner audio file than maybe you got from your jumpy video. Mm-hmm. So you could actually use that over your video. I mean, it's really super powerful. And for 15 bucks a month, yeah. um, the only thing that I would say that you got to watch out for, if you're doing like I'm doing and I'm recording at least an hour a day, maybe more, is I go in and download those videos right away and delete them. Because once you go over a certain threshold, they either start charging you or you can't record. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I I just keep that clean, kind of like emptying your deleted file. So it's uh, not sitting there taking up space. But Zoom, Z-O-O-M dot U-S is the the U.S. version. Zoom.com will take you to whatever uh, platform that is appropriate for your country. And uh, Steve Dotto is the is D- the guy's name. D-O. We'll link to it in the doobly-doo. Maybe you can link to Zoom uh, Send well. you directly to that video. He's done a couple of videos on the Zoom, but his wife is a school teacher and needed to know how to do this for the first time. Mm. So he said, okay, I'm recording this really for her, yeah. but it's a down and dirty run through and it was fantastic i watched it uh, at lunch today that's great hey will you recommend it either scoot your body a little to your right or your camera a little to the that's perfect thank you uh yeah i'm very uncomfortable edging out i'm I'm like (laughs) this is like that like that joke about the there you go perfect about that perfect (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Zoom, I, I use Zoom all the time. Uh, one thing to note about the free version is you can have unlimited meetings, unlimited length of meeting in a one-on-one. So if all you need to do is to do a, a face-to-face or a screen share or something, it's great uh, for the free version. There is a 45 minute limit for anything more than one person. So if there are two people in the meeting, you're limited to 45 minutes and it just cuts off. There's no warning or anything, It just it's done. Um, and one wow. thing I will say about that is if you are using the free version and you are doing a webinar presentation, like a screen share, and the person calls in because their computer audio is not great, that counts as two people. And so you may be having a meeting with one individual. They have signed on with two different connections and it will cut you off at that 45 minute mark. You can always just start another meeting. Um, your timer hmm. starts over, it's fine, but if you're not prepared for it, it is shocking. Um, yeah, we, I use Zoom all the time. It's great. Uh, uh, we've got some the questions. other thing about Zoom. I have one more thing about Zoom. They do have a webinar option. Hmm. The webinar option gives you a little bit different functionality, yeah. uh, but it's like another $4 on top of $15 mm-hmm. level. And, and I explored that one time and decided it just wasn't, it, there wasn't enough there for me to pay the extra. Yeah, it's what you do if, you, if you're going to have regular meetings of 1,000 people, you use that. Right. Um, and unless you're doing it regularly, you don't need it. Recorded yeah, is just fine. Agreed. We use Easy Webinar to post recorded webinars, and you can also do live webinars, and it's cheaper than doing that. It's pretty great. Uh, yeah, for me, the number one tool I would recommend and, and push people towards is Loom, loom.com. It allows for fast, easy screen video, face video, or combination of both. And um, it's been my number one tool for um, creating instructional videos. So I'm uh, making instructional videos, step-by-step processes for how to do certain, you know, access piece of software. Uh, what's great is for free, you get cloud storage. Um, and so your videos live in the cloud and you just send a link. People can view the link online. You don't have to send the file. Um, it can be pretty much any links. And right now they're offering free, I think forever, $5 a month, uh, which is half their normal price. And it's totally worth every, wow. every penny. Um, and what's great is you can, if you embed the link or if you just copy the link and put it into an email, it will, um, like if you're using Gmail, it'll automatically populate a GIF moving picture uh, thumbnail, and that is in the email. So, you know, when someone opens the email, they'll see that. It's really great. So we've got a couple of questions. Can you, ed- can you, can you edit that video and have it simple. stay on their cloud? You can do simple edits. So you can trim and you can cut. 
that's it. Okay. You can also, I think for the paid version, you can change the thumbnail and you can also add a call to action button at the end of the video. Okay. So a button that links that's them cool. out somewhere. Um, you can change the name and on their platform, kind of like YouTube, it's like YouTube light. There's a comment section. You can, you'll get notifica notifications when people view it. There's a lot of stuff. It's very robust for a very simple um, tool. And a lot of companies are using that to create um, like onboarding instructional videos. Like I'll use it if I need to make just a, a short five minute just my face to the camera video, or if I'm showing somebody, like I'll have people asking about our products, I can pull up a cutaway of one of our products and walk them through with my mouse what the, the process is and, and then just shoot them the video. I've also done it once where I had um, uh, a reseller of ours wanted to know, um, they said, hey, I've got a pitch. I wanna pitch your product to a grocery store, but I've never done that before. Do you have a resource? I created a presentation for them with our products. And then I recorded myself giving the presentation. And so I was able to send both to them and say, you know, here's the document you can use. And also here's an example of what that would look like. Because, you know, unless you have really robust notes in your, in your uh, PowerPoint, um, they're not gonna know a lot of the insider language and a lot of the ways to frame what is actually in the slides. Um, right. So I found that was a great, a great way to use that. It, yeah. and, and would, and would you care if one of those people sent your video that has you giving the presentation? No. Would it, would it bother you or no, no, I know that wasn't your intention. No, I, no it, it wouldn't bother me if, if they just sent that over. That's fine. It's got my face. It's got my contact information on it. It's, it's branded for me and I did it. I did it in such a way that start to finish. It was as if I was giving the pitch instead of having like maybe i would feel bad or differently about it if i had created an intro and was talking hey right. susan you know this is how you're going to want to do this make sure to emphasize xyz blah 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 i just recorded the pitch yeah i, I just recorded three videos for one of our customers knowing darn well someone somewhere is going to share it yeah. and so i recorded it such a way <laughs> that it wouldn't bother me if they if they did share it uh, so we've gotten a couple of questions. I'd like to go ahead and, and address those. Um, sure. Eric, the blue collar pipe smoker said, Seth, tell your dad I appreciate him laughing at and enabling my ridiculous post on Instagram. <laughs> and I do quite often. <laughs> Thank you for making me laugh, Eric. Uh, Steam Dome <laughs> asked, Seth, was it your dad's influence that got you started in smoking corn cob pipes? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, I, I, in general, in general, it was my dad's influence that got me interested in smoking at all. Uh, when I was 18, my interest was more in smoking cigars. Um, I tried smoking a pipe and found it to be difficult. And um, I've talked about this in videos before, but I felt like a, a failure at it because I couldn't keep it lit. Uh, couldn't uh, I just didn't enjoy it. Um, and really, it wasn't until we decided to start this channel and, and um, part of starting the channel was just to have an opportunity to hang out and have a conversation. When we decided to integrate pipe smoking into it, I wasn't super enthusiastic about it, but it has given me opportunity to learn um, how to enjoy that more. And so for a long time, you know, I took up vaping uh, because I enjoyed smoking cigars and I also enjoy kissing my wife and I, I made my choice. Um, I'm happy with my choice. Uh, and, um, so, you know, for me, for me, cigars was always first pick, but now I, I almost never smoke a cigar. Uh, and anytime I'm smoking, I'm smoking a pipe. Uh, however, I said before, very, very rarely do I smoke a pipe recreationally. It's almost always, um, when we're together and, and hanging out. Uh, Roy says, I uh, hope to make it out to the Chicago show uh, one year, only an eight-hour drive from PA. Uh, the Altopian says, well, with the toilet paper shortage, corn cobs might become just like gold. I just said that to my parents the other day. I said, I'm a little bit worried about what could happen with the <laughs> supply. <laughs> yeah. My, my dad, 
who's 85, can remember a time going to his great uncle's cabin in the mountains in Colorado where they used uh, Sears magazines or Sears catalogs. Oh, really? And uh, that was in the same era that folks used whatever they had. Mm -hmm. There's a couple interesting videos here lately uh, on YouTube, and one of them that predates even this rush on toilet paper. There's a guy called the History Guy Mm -hmm. that has a wonderful channel. And he was talking about, you know, that toilet paper, not only is it a relatively new invention, it is still not universally used around the world. And uh, depending upon where you're from, you use what's available. And what's available in the Midwest at one time is corn cobs. So it was, it was really a thing. Sounds terrible. Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, I have um, never been happier to have a bidet. Um, in my home and uh, have have offered um, to 3D print their 3D printable travel bidets. Uh, it's basically a nozzle you can attach to a water bottle, um, which apparently is a real thing. Like it, It's a product you can buy for when you're traveling. Um, there's no way, no way under normal circumstances I'm taking it with me in an airplane or something, taking it to a hotel. <laughs> not, not a chance, not a chance. But... Um, you know, if anybody wants one, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to print one for you. Um, and, uh, so yeah. Uh, WKR Piper in Cincinnati said, might you fellas be in Ohio in August by chance? I know Scott goes to Dayton here and there. Maybe Boontar will go if the show goes on. You want to speak to, um, the likelihood of, of making more Ohio trips? Well, my mother-in-law died last fall, and uh, she was really our draw back there. And and there's a, still a few few remaining ragtag family members on my wife's side. I have no family there. Um, our best, best friends, friends in the whole wide world just moved from Ohio to Hawaii. Um, so that will be increasing the likelihood of trips to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we're, it, it's my wife's hometown, and I, if, I lived there many years, and we like a lot of things about Ohio. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be back. I, I don't know about the show, but yeah. maybe. I, I wouldn't rule it out. The last two times that we went, we took the grandkids along with us and took them over to Kosai, and they spent the day hanging out. And, and one year, Boontar's wife, Skipsy, and his mom and th- their kids went to Kosai with my grandkids while Boontar and I were at the show. Nice. So it was a really fun day. Um, yeah, I mean, and maybe the pipe show is the thing that draws, you know, that, that, that um, is the reason for taking a trip. It's one of those places, you know, for me, it's, I, it's home. Um, I always enjoy going back. Uh, but yeah, with, with people leaving, um, there's less of a reason to just, go and visit um uh wk Piper. I mean, the, the nice the nice thing about it though is when we go we have more time to do the things that we didn't have time to do when there was so much family to, to touch base with that is true uh, uh wk piper in cincinnati said zoomer house party is all the rage right now i'm, I'm not familiar with the uh, house party um skype what is that well ironically enough we're uh using skype to power this uh, this conversation, um, I don't know if there are other ways to do that, but the software um, pulls uh, Skype has a feature that allows it to be pulled into this live software. So uh, I agree. Under normal circumstances, I don't use Skype ever. Um, it just happened to be the one that works with yeah. this. At, at work, we actually have Skype as our uh, voice over IP, and it's an enterprise version hmm. of Skype. And it works just as bad as the home version. <laughs> uh, Lefty Me asks, are Riscob shipping to Denmark? Yeah, ship all the time. There you go. All the time. Uh, 3D printed pipe, is it possible? Um, possible, <laughs> probably. Uh, wise, I'm not sure. Um, you know, there are some... Uh, possible, yes. There are some uh, filaments that have um, 
incredible strength. There are, it's possible to 3D print um, with steel. It's possible to 3D print with uh, Kevlar and, and other um, things woven into the plastic. Um, standard plastics, probably not. Uh, certainly not the way I smoke. I, I smoke uh, smoke my pipes pretty hot, and uh, so someone with a cooler smoke would would um, find more success in that. Um, I can't think of any of the materials that would do a good job withstanding that. Although maybe you know the the plastic is heated to a specific temperature, um, and it is possible, though I think unlikely, that a burning pipe would actually be uh, lower temperature than um, the plastic is melted at. So it's possible that a burning pipe may be a lower temperature than the plastic melting point. I will look into that. That's an interesting question. Interesting thought. Yeah. Uh, Ricky B, good luck uh, with the new glasses. Do what? New glasses? Who's got new glasses? Uh, Ricky B, went to the, uh, the eye doctor for the first time today. Everything's good. First pair of glasses coming in the next couple of weeks. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> Eric says, uh, can you imagine how tough your bunghole is using corn cobs? Good Lord. Is there a light cream out there to soothe that? LOL. Man. I mean, seriously, everything about that sounds so unappealing. <laughs> yeah, everything. I Everything. Everything. We're just going to leave it at that. Although, although I mean, for science, <laughs> for science, I feel like you should tell tell what would be your go-to cob. I mean, I'm assuming we're using uh, a pipe, right? Yeah, that's not happening. It is not happening. Now, now maybe a briar pipe I could see using <laughs> <Yeah>. for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mirror some. Nice, nice, church, nice long church warden. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Austin asked, uh, how bad is the shutdown? How bad is this shutdown? And is it affecting the Friday barbecue Joe's tradition? Are you getting it to go? Yeah, pretty good, Austin. Actually, uh, Jandy and I had dinner there tonight. Uh, we ate in our car. Oh, uh, really? But yeah, we, yes, we didn't go last Friday, but, uh, the, the fact that they've got their drive through open, uh, it could happen this week. Austin lives in, uh, Thomasville. Oh, really? Nice. Yep. Um, How about you, Austin? Have you made it out there lately? Good question. This may be one of my favorite comments of the, the night. Ambler said, I've never asked myself, can I wipe myself with that so much before? <laughs> <laughs> didn't uh, I was didn't make the Seth, toilet paper rush, huh? I was telling Seth that one of the guys I watch on YouTube, um, it, it, it's called The Den of Tools. And the guy is like super obsessed with Harbor Freight. And most of his videos are reviewing Harbor Freight products. And uh, he did a video the other day on Harbor Freight products that to use during the pandemic. And he talked a little bit about what happens when you run out of toilet paper. We may have to resort to the old method of using, you know, uh, cloth that then gets washed. And that was very, very common. Mm -hmm. And then he transitioned to the fact that you can get microfiber cloths for free with a coupon at Harbor Freight. <laughs> That's great, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, speaking of Harbor Freight, yeah. maybe you heard this. Um, they sent out on Sunday, the, the owner is a guy named Eric Schmidt. I think it's Schmidt. Um, out in California, and he announced that they are going to give 100% of their personal protection equipment, nitrile gloves, dust masks, respirators, they're giving them away to local first, uh, first responders and hospitals. And so they're saying, just if you know somebody who is a first responder, have them get in touch with the local store manager, and they're going to divvy those out to uh, the, the folks in the various communities where Harbor Freight has stores, which is like everywhere now. Yeah. But they're going to empty their warehouse as well, which is just, it, it's very, it's wonderful. That's, that's awesome. That's really, really great yep. to doing that. Yeah. I mean, you think about it, talk about, uh, you know, taking advantage of an opportunity. It's in such high demand, they could have just, 
sold them out, made a whole bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And I know that items like that are not very high profit margin. So it's going to cost them a bunch of money to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've know a couple of people that, um, could definitely take advantage of that. That'd be great. I mean, there's the, you know, you see reports all over the place about hospitals and, and first responders and people not being able to get, um, those resources, uh, or food, you know, coming off of a, a 48 hour shift, um, not being able to get things that they need. Um, that would be, that'd be did so I, did I send, tough. Did I send you those links today about making respirators on a 3D printer? You did. You did. Uh, there's a lot of debate about that. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of the feedback about it's it's a great idea. A lot of the feedback about that is that it's actually not a great idea. Um, there's some <laughs> some reasons why uh, it's you know um, the the best three D printed shape is still not going to completely adhere to your face. Um, there is a lot of the people on the forum were questioning, well, where do you get the the discs? The filter. Yeah, you still have to get the filter and. Um, and then uh, the big question is, how safe is the filament to breathe and to have that close to your face for a prolonged period of time? Um, you know, there's stuff okay, in the plastic. You're not smoking it. I, I for the way I look at it is okay. It's better than the respirator I'm not wearing now. Yes. Right. Yeah. And and if you're just wearing it out to you know if you if it gets bad enough that you got to be careful walking to your mailbox then having something like that is better than not having something like that. And where are you going to get the filter media? You know, maybe, maybe you're, you're folding up a napkin. Maybe you're putting some, some felt or some fabric you have at home. Uh, one thought I had is we need to design one that uses a folded coffee filter. Yeah, I was, was thinking of that. I mean, it, there are a lot of them on, on the websites, the 3D printing websites, Thingiverse and others. Um, and you know, it, it's definitely a possibility. Um, but there's, there's some skepticism about, about their effectiveness. Sure. Um, I agree. I don't want to see my doctor wear one. Right. Well, I mean, if they, again, the, the question is, is it better than the nothing that they, that they don't have because those have all been taken yeah. out. One of the more wild stories I saw was, I think it was NBC or one of the, one of the channels is donating all of their um, daytime drama and, and cop drama medical equipment um, to hospitals as well. So, you know, anything that would be used for um, Grey's Anatomy and, and all those other dramas is, is medical grade stuff that they purchased sure. and, and um, sending that over as well. By the way, question about how long you can smoke one of these. So I, I've refilled it once since we've been, filming and we started at nine o'clock it's nine twenty. i said you get about 20 minutes out of these um, e easily easily 20 minutes of uh of profit time so you, over you, those last hour every 20 minutes yeah we're an hour, hour and 10 minutes on this stream uh well, i started smoking before we started so <laughs> yeah, and before before we had the failed first stream uh yep Steam Dome says, um, hope we do plan to do more of these live chats. Please tell us you are. Maybe. <laughs> Don't know. Uh, it's been fun. I, I'm just I'm just glad to, that you guys showed up. Yeah. Uh, that was around. that was a big question. So that's right. Uh, Austin Austin Very cool. uh, said I had barbecue shack on Randolph Street for lunch today. Lucky me, I can take my lunch home. I have never been to Barbecue Shack. I've driven past it a, a thousand times. I feel like food. I guess you're endorsing it. Too need to step up or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, Aristogrub. Aristogrub. That's right. That's right. Uh, giving, getting, <laughs> thanks for the microfiber tip with coupons, uh, Lowe's and Home Depot, carries toilet paper, and don't forget to check suppliers like Granger. Um, oh, our, our local Home Depot had pallets of it going up and down the aisles. We buy it from Amazon and have had regular deliveries from Amazon. It's not in short supply. Yeah. People are just freaking out. Yeah. Uh, I, every time I've gone to Walmart, they've been just fully out. It's absolutely out. Um, I know. Because people are hoarding it. It's ridiculous. Yes. Well, and I'm going to Walmart. And I know there are better places to go, I'm sure. You know you know, a product you might be able to use as a filter and a respirator is that low-carb breaded Aldi's. It's always available. 
Yeah. Uh, Ricky B, I see see that comment about the uh, two liter Coke bottle, Coke can, duct tape, cotton pads, and activated charcoal. That is straight out of Modern Rogue and, and their tear gas episode. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure uh, if it works for tear gas, it works for coronavirus. Um, so everyone check that out. Uh, check that out. Might put a, a link in the description down below when all is said and done. Um, couple, uh, couple of people saying, hey, this is, uh, this is a lot of fun. Time flies. Well, um, it does people... fly. Well, I'm glad you guys joined us. Yeah, hey, I'm using my, my new uh, Isotunes headphones, too. You know what's that? Uh, I did. Wire- wireless, wireless Bluetooth headphones. They work great. I've been, I've been listening to music on them. I, I haven't been using the microphone on it really at all. So it's kind of kind of good to hear that it's working. Yeah, yeah it's, it's working just great. Um, I'm using the Apple AirPods. And what's what I like about these is that they do a really good job of knowing which one is active and, and switching the microphone. And so, you know, I got a notification that uh, the battery was getting low. And so I can take one out, charge it, and they charge, they probably charged 50% in just five minutes in the case. Um, and mm. so that'll give me another hour and then just swap out. It's great um, for something so small. Uh, awesome. Austin said, definitely give it a go. Great breakfast and cheap prices. And Ambler asks, uh, have you ever been to Prissy Polly's Barbecue in Kernersville? K Vegas, absolutely been to Prissy Polly's. Yeah? Yeah, and, and Clark's Barbecue right down the street from that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, I've been, I've, I haven't been everywhere, but boy, I sure have tried. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, it would be fun. I don't see myself doing this because, as I said, as we were eating toast last week, I really don't want to make a show where we are eating food. Even though I have that one YouTube channel, it wasn't about watching me eat. It just that isn't a pretty thing. <laughs> I'm however, aware of that. However, what you what you point out about the food shows, and I noticed this, I was watching, what was I watching? Oh, I was watching, there's a guy who is all over Facebook. He does mixed drinks and they're like these wild concoctions. Um, but he's, you know, kind of wild and goofy and charismatic and uh, got caught in a in video the other day. And, and notice he spent five minutes making this super, super, super elaborate um, concoction and then didn't taste it. And, uh, and you know, uh, that's the cardinal sin of the food show yeah. and the, the food YouTubers is um, if you yeah. don't taste it, uh, taste it, show a reaction, you know, people connect to people, the food might be great. How do I know if it's any good? And of course you're going to lie if it's bad. Still, I want to see it. Uh, no, no. So on, on uh, the Arista Grub channel, which really isn't a thing, um, there's one or two videos where I wasn't thrilled. Like uh, I think the one where I tried to grill hamburgers on my pellet smoker. It's not made for grilling. Mm. Um, and, and I tried and it was, it was okay. It would have been much better as smoked meatloaf, which I really enjoy doing on it. Right. Um, I did one with egg bites and the egg bites were just fantastic. I have made that recipe over and over and over again, the sous vide egg bites. And uh, this thing I'm doing now with uh, the low carb bread, trying to do a either a French toast casserole or even a bread pudding. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm I don't know how many batches I've made of it. Six batches of it now. And I, when I make a batch, it's enough for six breakfasts. So that gives you an idea of how long I've been playing around with it. And eventually, when I get it right, I'll I'll put a video out on YouTube on the Aristogrub channel, and and I will eat some. Yeah. But but I'm not going to film myself. There, there's where it would be fun to be Guy Fieri and to go around all the barbecue places in North Carolina and to try them and rank them a little bit. Um, but I also, if the service is good and the food is decent, I, I'm happy. I don't feel the need to judge one against another. Right. And And I think, you know, that's almost what would be expected if you're, if you're just exclusively trying barbecue places in the Carolinas. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Although I have thought about doing it for uh, bacon, egg and cheese biscuits. That would be fun to have, uh, have you and waffle and a few other people 
uh, go to our favorite breakfast place and meet together somewhere and do a blind taste test with uh, with biscuits. That would come be, up with a winner. That would be uh, though. I would have to do it uh, bunless or biscuitless. Yeah, well, and, and, and if you know anything about the restaurants, their biscuits and their hush puppies are so unique to each location that I, I can tell by looking at those products where they came from. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. They uh, they have a signature look, taste, and feel for sure. Yeah, they do. Hey, um, have you ever been to Hattie B's? I have been to Hattie B's. Uh, WK, our Piper in Cincinnati said, every post you make, I show people. Look at what this world traveler is eating today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't post a picture today, but, you know, since, uh, since it was brought up, I took a picture of my barbecue in the car. So I will post that picture <laughs> on the Aristogram oh, Instagram feed. <laughs> I had my first carbs of the week. You know what I got there? I love their uh, sweet potato casserole. Mm. And uh, so that was that was it. And, and I'll have to cut it out for the rest of the week because that's uh, that's quite a treat. Yeah. Lots of sugar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, anybody else, or should we wrap it up, boy? I think we we can. We're we're nearing probably an end, unless anyone has a, a question or. Something, uh, something else to talk about, um, guys. This has been great. This has been a ton of fun, and you know, uh, like we said on the the, the top and kind of in the middle is, um, we really thought this would be a good opportunity to get together and have a little bit more of a timely um, video than what we had already recorded, um, and uh, to just have a conversation because the world has changed in the last two weeks, um, in in significant ways, and. Um, and you know, the kind of unexpected consequence, I guess, is that so many people showed up and commented and, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I think if we continue in quarantine, um, and maybe a fun excuse to get together and hang out and have a few more of these. I mean, I didn't want to do a coronavirus video because everybody's doing them right. Yeah. At the same time, it, it, it is something of a time capsule. This video will exist forever now, and, and we did film it during this environment. So uh, I don't think it's going to be a, a big topic of discussion um, no. on a lot of our videos. But uh, but it does present the opportunity to try some new things. And I, I mentioned it earlier for those of you who were not here. Uh, one of the things that Seth and I want to do is to, uh, on some of these videos, invite a guest to, to join us. And not a guest to join us to be interviewed, but a guest to be your voice while we're sitting here chatting. That's the one thing that's, that's kind of been missing from Mark with Men's Breakfast Club is a, a third of us is in the room with us. Yeah. And uh, so it's kind of cool, the idea of having somebody here. And it's been great having you guys chatting with us, too. So uh, we'll throw this out as, as the call to action um, before we wrap up. Uh, who who would you recommend we reach out to and, and uh, invite to be part of the conversation? And um, uh, you can say yourself and then one other person. Um, uh, there you go. You've you got to gotta, uh, vote for, but volunteer somebody else. Um, Do they have to be in the YTPC, boy? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, you know, I, I assume... Um, that that might be a natural place to start, but it doesn't have to be. Certainly not. All right. I don't mind reaching out to somebody who's uh, a little bit outside of our sphere of uh, influence. Well, and, All right. Hey, it's a great call to action. Yeah. Also, we've got a lot of people. Um, we've got a lot of people within our sphere of influence that are outside of the YTPC who would be great to have a conversation with. So. I know, I know, but I'd, I'd love to get some other input. So, yeah. All right. So with that, why don't we wrap it up? Thanks for joining us, boy. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Homer. And hey, are, are you going to are you going to upload the video that we recorded for this week? Is that going to go live sometime? Uh, maybe next week. I'm really anxious to see how that grilled cheese sandwich came out. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, so is everyone else. They're uh, edge of their seats. I can tell. Edge of their seats. Uh, I will. I will tell you what. I will, I'm not going to upload that uh, tomorrow. So this this will stand as this week's Mark Women's Breakfast Club. Um, and then, uh, yeah, at some point, maybe next week, maybe as a bonus video over the weekend or something, we'll throw that one out there. But uh, um, I'm right. not doubling my work tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Again, thanks for joining us, guys. Make it a great week. Now, now I have to go to Instagram and uh, upload that picture. <laughs> That's right. You promised. <laughs> All right. See you guys I later. I did. All right. See ya.